Hi, my name is Neil Blevins, and this is a tutorial about extracting a pattern from a photograph. So in this example, let's say you have a robot character, and uh, you're painting him, and uh, this is the paint surface that's on, say, one of his legs, and you want to apply some dirt to this. So you could certainly hand paint the dirt, but it's usually better to start off with something more photographic and then paint on top of the dirt. So that's what we're going to do in this example. So let's go over to here, and this is um, a photograph of some dirt I took many years ago that was uh, on my dad's red minivan. And what I want to do is I want to take the dirt from this and I want to apply it as a uh, more brownish dirt onto the surface. So let's go about extracting this dirt. And um, since we have a, a red color of the minivan and then white of the, uh, the dirt itself, um, there's some good color contrast there. I'm going to use Select Color Range and then I will select some of the white of the dirt and uh, play with the fuzziness to select more or less of it. And the fuzziness value will be different depending on what your original image is. Um, so you just got to play around with it to see what works best. So I now have selected all the dirt and I'll create a new layer. And then I'll fill that new layer with white. Then I will deselect and then I will fill the background with black. And there you go. I now have uh, black everywhere where there's no dirt and white everywhere there is dirt. Now you also notice some gray over here and that's because when I did my color range selection it had trouble telling the difference between the color of the dirt and the color of the specular highlight that was on the van surface. So uh, let's go fix that and uh, we'll just flatten this image and then go to levels and uh, we'll clamp these colors to get rid of the uh, uh, the gray that was over there. And uh, also note, sometimes you don't even need to use color range. Sometimes you can actually just take your image and desaturate it and use levels to get what you want. It was just, I used the uh, color range in this case because it seemed like there was good color contrast between the two things that I wanted, but you don't always have to use it. Sometimes just grayscaling and then uh, using levels is good enough. So now I'm going to select this and copy it. Go back to my original image, and um, what I have up here is a layer of just uh, some dirt. And this was a photograph I took of dirt, which I then um, removed some of the contrast of. And um, the important thing here is you don't need anything too contrasty or too detailed, but just something that has a little color variation, just so that uh, your dirt doesn't end up being the exact same color everywhere. So I'm going to take this dirt layer, and I will create a mask, and then Alt click in the mask, and then Control V to paste my dirt. And there you go. So now once we've left this and we go back to here, everywhere where it was white in this mask is now showing the dirt layer and everywhere that's black is showing my original paint layer. Now you probably don't want to leave it just like this. Uh, what you want to do is you'll want to then paint on top of this. Like for example, let's remove some of the dirt. So I'll get a, a brush, a black brush, and I'll paint inside of the mask a little to remove some of the dirt. And, uh, you know, if this is a robot leg, then you might want to leave more dirt down below because that's where naturally dirt would splash up onto his leg. Or, uh, you know, if there's um, um, seams or, you know, cut lines or whatnot, you'll probably want more dirt around there. So you can go in and you can add paint on top of the, the dirt. But because you start off with the uh, original photographic dirt, you have a, a faster base to get something that looks realistic. And then you can uh, add... Um, um, your hand paint uh, on top of that in order to get the final results that you're after. So anyway, uh, hopefully you found this to be useful and uh, please visit my website at neilblevins.com for more tutorials and uh, if you want to be notified next time I post a new video tutorial please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.